Success Odyssey. Hi, I'm Brian Jude. I'm an ordinary person just like you. But more than that, I've realized I'm an extraordinary person just like you. So join me as together we embark on our Success Odyssey. Namaste and welcome back to Success Odyssey. In the last two episodes, we spoke a lot about the law of attraction, what it is and what it isn't. Now this week we're going to talk about another major component to our collective journey of success, and that's the law of abundance. So what is the law of abundance? The law of abundance is actually a component of the law of attraction, the way I see it. Now simply put, it's the principle that all that we need exists in this universe, that there's no lack of anything for everyone, and all we need to do is decide to access it. And like the law of attraction states, if we are experiencing lack, it is simply because our own perception has made it so. Our thoughts, our feelings, and our courses of action have brought us to a place where we are experiencing this false sense of lack. Another way of looking at it is that we have to be in alignment with the law of abundance. What does that mean? Well, it means we have to be ready to receive. It means we have to be in vibrational harmony with that which we desire in order to get it. We need to use the law of attraction basically to get the positive result of the law of abundance. They work hand in hand. So how is it possible that there's an abundance of everything that we need in this universe? I mean, we live on a finite planet with finite resources, right? Well, not exactly. Now, true, there are some things for which there is a finite amount. Take gold, for example. But is it really possible for one person or a group of people to hoard so much gold that there's not enough for everyone? The answer is actually no. Besides, not everyone wants gold anyway. So, in actuality, there's really enough gold for people who want gold. You can pretty much go anywhere right now and buy a bar of gold or a piece of gold jewelry or any form of gold. It's out there. Its abundance is evident. The same thing holds true for wealth. As I mentioned last week, you can think of wealth as kind of being in the same light as health. There's no lack of health anywhere. Your ability to attract health can't take health away from someone else. There's no limit to the health needed to be healthy in our universe. You simply need to start making healthy choices and you'll start attracting health. So if you want to start attracting wealth, then you need to make wealthy choices. But the law of abundance says that the wealth is there, whether you attract it to yourself or not. Think of the ocean. I love to use water as a metaphor. It always has such a great quality that you can compare it to so many wonderful things. All right, now imagine that you're standing on the beach on a hot summer day and you need a way to cool yourself down. Well, what's right in front of you? That's right, an abundance of water that's connected to every other source of water on the planet. And you only have to go into the water to accept what it has to offer. You're not using up anyone else's water by bathing in it. It's there for you should you choose to use it. Now, what if you live far away from the ocean and you really want to bathe in it? Pools, lakes, rivers, swimming holes, they just won't do it for you. You want the ocean. Does that abundance of ocean still exist? (laughs) Well, of course it does. Is it available to you? Absolutely. But it's going to require some effort on your part to get to it. You have to know where you want to go, believe that you can get there, and then take action to get yourself there. Okay, now imagine the ocean being filled with $100 bills. This is another metaphor, by the way. Now, there might be a finite amount of money that can fill the ocean, but is it enough for you and everyone else? (laughs) You bet. The question is, how much of it can you collect? Are you able to grab money and carry it in your arms? But what if you got a bucket or a wheelbarrow or a dump truck? How much of it do you want? Whatever it is, it's there for the taking, and you're not depriving anyone else by getting it, as long as you're not doing anything dishonest, obviously, but all you have to do is put yourself in a position to receive it. Another favorite water metaphor of mine is to think of an empty cup. Let's say you're very thirsty and you have this empty cup in front of you. Let's say you happen to be somewhere where there's one of those water coolers that's connected to the plumbing system in the building. So you have your thirst. And quenching your thirst is your desire to take action. You have a belief that the water cooler will supply you with more than enough water to satisfy you. Now, there's no way you'd ever think of using the water cooler if you didn't want the water enough and if you didn't believe that there was enough water for you in the cooler to drink. So now that you have that desire and you have that belief, you then take action. 
You go to the cooler, you put your cup under the faucet, you press the button, you fill the cup, and you drink your water. It's that easy, right? Well, it can be just as easy for you to attract anything that you want to manifest in your life. Let's say instead of a cup, you have an empty wallet or an empty bank account. Now, what's the most common thing to do when you have that kind of situation? You probably start to feel bad about your situation, anxiety about the bills you have to pay. You may even be working hard and still not getting enough money. Why? Because while you may want the money, the desire is still there, and you may have the belief that there's enough money for you out there for you, you might not yet believe that it's accessible to you. But just like that cooler, it's there. And that cooler might be right in front of you. You just have to believe that you have the ability to access it and then take the right action and fill your cup. Don't let your fears, your insecurities, or anxieties stop you. Just believe and act. Okay, once again, I want to make a disclaimer if you hear some interesting sounds in the background. I do have my nine-month-old son, David, with me, uh, so that's who you might be hearing in the background. Uh, also, I want to say that these episodes, you can start to see now that they're going to start getting shorter, for the most part. When I have interviews or discussions, they'll bound to be a bit longer, but for the most part, I'm going to try to keep these kind of short. All right, now it's time to check your homework. Now, if you haven't been doing the assignments, don't worry, you can catch up. In the past few weeks, we've been keeping a success journal, and I've asked you to pick one clear, solid, tangible, specific goal for this year, write it down, visualize that goal, write a journal entry as if it were the day that you achieved that goal, meditate on the feeling of that day daily, and then finally, identify the challenges that might prevent you from achieving those goals. Now that you've identified the challenges, your next assignment is to identify the solutions to those challenges. Write them all down in your journal. And then visualize yourself going through the process of taking action on those solutions, overcoming the challenges. Now understand that you might not be able to figure out every solution to every challenge. And know that there might be other solutions out there as well that you just might not be manifesting yet. So remain open to that. Now, again, the important thing here is that you don't let these challenges discourage you because if you get discouraged, that's a negative vibration and a negative vibration will keep you from attracting what you want. Now, perhaps you need to attract the right solution to a particular problem. Well, try using the techniques we've used to attract that solution. Ask the universe to provide you insight and think and feel positively about receiving it. Even if you can't figure out a solution to your challenge, that's okay. Just skip the identifying the solution part and go right to visualizing yourself overcoming that challenge. Feel what it feels like to go through a monumental obstacle and come out a winner. Because how you feel is more important than what you do at this stage of the game. Think of it this way. If you're feeling negative about something you want, even if you know what to do to get it, your feelings are going to interfere with your actions and you won't be able to attract what it is you want. It's much better right now to feel positive about it, be open to the idea that the solution will come to you at the right time, and be grateful that the law works every time. By doing this, you will eliminate any resistance that you might have that will keep you from getting what you want. So write down your solutions, if you can find them, or write down